Welcome to another episode of the Sisterhood of the Scalpel. I'm Dr. Miriam Zamani. I'm Dr. Julie Kana. And we're both board certified plastic surgeons practicing here in Oakville at ICLS. So Dr. Kana, today we're going to talk about something that actually may be a concern to a lot of women, but doesn't get enough attention. And that's talking about our nipples. So we know yeah. from speaking to patients that sometimes patients come in and they may have different variations of nipples. That's one of the things, you know, it's like our eyebrows. We have different looking eyebrows. Women have different looking nipples, but sometimes we want to correct them or improve the appearance so that we're more comfortable in clothing. We know nipples can be a little bit over projecting. Sometimes they're not sticking out enough or, you know, they play a little bit game of peekaboo, what we call inverted nipples. And sometimes they're a little bit too big, especially after breastfeeding. And sometimes they're, you know, a little bit on the shy side and our women want them to be a little bit more pronounced. So we see all these variations. Women commonly don't know that if this is something that bothers you in your clothing, in your daily lifestyle, there are solutions to that. I think we need to talk, before we talk about nipples, we need to talk anatomy. So what do we mean? What do Dr. Z and I mean when we're talking about nipples? Okay. So ladies, the brown circle, pink circle around the projecting nipple part where the baby latches to breastfeed is called the areola in our world. And the nipple is the central portion that where the, the glands feed to the duct. So we call this the nipple areola complex. So it is the complex of the skin and the nipple in the middle. So today we're gonna to just talk about the nipples and maybe another day we'll talk about the areola, which is the other area because that bothers people too. So let's start talking about it. Let's talk about the shy nipples first. Well, let's talk about shy nipples. And the most important thing I'm gonna tell you about shy nipples is mm -hmm. if you have what's called an inverted or an ingoing nipple, the first question we're gonna ask is, is that new? And I, you know what, I'm never gonna stop saying this over and over again, please, please, please. Nobody likes their mammograms. Nobody wants to do it. Please be up to date on your mammograms. In, uh, in our area, it's every two years after 50, but any changes or whenever your family doctor, and even earlier, if you have a family history, especially on your mother's side. So a new inverted nipple, if you have, I'm gonna say this again, if you have a new inverted nipple, the nipple tucks in, go see your doctor immediately. This is not something you wait on. It could be nothing, but I do not want anyone not doing that. So that's number one. But there are a lot of women who've noticed this since puberty, that they've always had an inverted nipple. Or after pregnancy, they have it on both sides. These things are a little less worrisome, but we're still gonna go through our due diligence and make sure everything is fine. So when we talk about this, the stuck in nipple or the inside nipple, the first thing we look at is, can it easily come out? This is what we call reducible. Because the easier it is to take out, it's gonna tell us on what we need to do to correct it. Well, the first thing you need to understand is the anatomy. So when you're looking at the breast, everyone, if you haven't had kids, you may think a nipple's like a hose, okay? And the milk comes out of the hose. Let's be very clear, it's a sprinkler. And there's like multiple tubes coming out from 20 little glands, little manufacturing factories of milk, and they come towards the nipple. So actually when you're breastfeeding, you'll notice that milk goes in all directions. And that's really a big thing you have to think about because this is about those tubes from the factories producing milk being too short. Okay, well, if something's too short, it needs to be stretched. When I think of stretch, I think of physio and things like that. Well, we can start with just simple things. There are breast pumps. There is something called a niplet that can try and stretch or do physio on those ducts to pull them out. And maybe they don't work or they don't hold it out long enough and then we need to talk about surgery. But don't forget those things because sometimes we use them after surgery to keep the result going, just like physio after another area. So then what do we need to do? Well, sometimes we need to go in and cut those ducts. So I want you, if we're cutting the ducts, then this may interfere with breastfeeding and you need to be aware of that. Whenever we operate on the breast, we're women, we're gonna be blatantly honest, you've gotta be okay with the fact that you may not be able to breastfeed because 20% of women can't breastfeed without an operation. How can Dr. Z and I tell you you can breastfeed with an operation when we couldn't tell you that the day before? If we're going to go in there and cut them, we just make four little stab incisions 
at the base of the nipple. We're saying stab incisions. What we're implying by that is you know, you're going to be nice and comfortable. It's totally frozen. We're not just going to come <laughs> Did down I say that? You. you did. And oh, stab such a surgeon. Incision. It is such it's a small. small incision, less than five millimeters. So it just means that it's a tiny, tiny little precise incision, almost like a little surgical stab. Yeah. So don't be afraid. You're going to be nice and comfortable when we're doing this procedure. <laughs> And we can reduce it that way for a simple, reducible nipple and put some strategic stitches at the base to hold it out. That's our standard way of treating easily reducible nipples. We can get more aggressive depending on the more stuck in it is. And then the incisions need to be a little bit more aggressive as well. Now the opposite spectrum, and, and I think we see mm -hmm. this mostly uh, after breastfeeding is the most common place we've seen this over the years is mm. enlarged nipples and women walk around hiding them extra padding extra pads because they're so afraid of them so what can we do for enlarged nipples when we're talking about over projected nipples really the key is to see how much extra we have for patients who have just a little bit of mild excess again very easy procedure done under local anesthetic. You have your laughing gas to make you comfortable. And what we're doing is we're just taking what we call a little bit of a telescoping procedure. So, you know, those old timey telescopes that you stretch out and then you collapse back down. That's what we're doing. We're essentially allowing it to collapse back down. We take a small rim of the extra portion of the skin at the base of the nipple and then using, again, strategic suture placements we just tuck it back so it's like collapsing the telescope back on itself. When we do have larger nipples, especially this is something we see again after breastfeeding because the tissues do stretch out to accommodate that act, what are our options, Dr. Prana? Well, you know, when we've got that larger nipple, it's almost, you know, it's I can't even think of a time where I didn't do it in combination with it being too long. Like it, it's hard for me to think of a time. So usually it's too long and it's too large in the diameter. So we reduce the size of the diameter. So when you're looking at it from a head top shot, it's the, the, how big is the circle? And then we're telescoping it in. So we can do both of those procedures at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. one area where we do take it down without needing to telescope it is men. We're not talking about nipples in men. And men do have this problem, and it's something that's easy to do, where they just feel the diameter or the amount of it sticking out or the width of it is too much. And again, local anesthetic, easy procedure where we can make it much smaller and much less noticeable. And it, it's, you know, I've, I'm surprised how many men I've done over the years, and I don't think all the guys know that it's something that we can do. Um, but it is, it's something that's really easy to do and makes them more comfortable in their own in their in their own skin when they're not wearing a shirt they feel like it looks a little bit more balanced i hope this information was helpful if you have any questions about nipples or areolas please don't hesitate to ask us we are the sisterhood of the scalpel i'm dr julie Kana, and i'm dr miriam zamani make sure you follow us on social and on youtube follow our channel and please don't hesitate to ask us any questions or at icls and we'll hopefully address them for you the next time.